Hello, my name is Richard Williams, Battalion Chief and Safety Officer of the City of Greenville Fire Department. The video you're about to view gives you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform the Greenville City Fire Department Physical Agility Test. The test is ensure that the possible new hires are physically able to perform essential job tasks at emergency incidents. No firefighting experience is necessary to complete the test. Requirements for clothing and equipment are as follows. Closed toed, closed heel footwear, long pants, shirts with sleeves, hard hat with chin straps attached, safety glasses, knee pads and gloves. Hard hats, safety glasses, knee pads and gloves are provided by the City of Greenville. No watches, loose or restrictive jewelry can be worn during the testing. The physical agility test is a pass-fail test based on completing the test in 10 minutes or less. The test consists of seven events with an 85-foot walk between each station to allow for an approximately 20-second recovery period. No running is allowed between stations. You will wear a 42-pound vest during the entire agility test, which simulates full protective gear worn by firefighters. To ensure accuracy, at least two stopwatches will be used. One is used as the official time stopwatch and the second is backup. The testing evaluator will not lead you through the test. However, he or she will follow you through the test. The evaluator will monitor for safety, ensure correctness, and provide directions when necessary. Prior to starting the test, a set of baseline vitals will be taken for medical requirements. If you have a, a systolic blood pressure of 150 or greater or a diastolic blood pressure of 90 or greater while sitting, you will not be permitted to take the physical agility test. You will be allowed a warm-up and stretching period before starting the physical agility test. This event is designed to simulate the critical task of climbing stairs in full protective gear worn by firefighters while carrying a hose bundle. You will lift a hose bundle consisting of 50 foot of two and a half inch hose lifting with your legs and placing it on your right shoulder. You will then proceed up the drill tower staircase to the sixth floor without using the handrail. Return down the staircase to the first floor keeping your left hand in contact with the handrail. After reaching the first floor, you will turn around and proceed back to the sixth floor without using the handrail. Return down the staircase to the first floor, keeping your left hand in contact with the handrail. Exit out the door which you entered. This concludes this event. You will then walk 85 feet to the next station. This event is designed to simulate the critical task of extending a dry hose line from the fire apparatus to the fire compartment and dragging an uncharged hose line around obstacles while remaining stationary in a low posture. You must grasp a nozzle attached to a 200 foot of inch and three quarter hose. Placing it over your shoulder or across your chest not exceeding the eight foot mark on the hose. You are allowed to run during this hose drag. Drag the hose line 75 feet around a pre-positioned barrel Make a 90 degree turn staying in the corridor and proceed an additional 25 feet to the 5 by 7 box. You will then drop to at least one knee and pull the remaining 50 feet of hose as marked on the hose line into the 5 by 7 box. This concludes this event. You will then walk 85 feet to the next station. This event is designed to simulate the critical task of removing equipment from a compartment on an apparatus, carrying them to an emergency incident, returning and replacing them back into the compartment of the apparatus. For this event, you will approach an open upper compartment of the apparatus. You will remove one saw from the compartment and place it on the ground. Remove the second saw from the compartment and place it on the ground beside the first saw. You will then pick up both saws, lifting with your legs, one in each hand and walk 75 feet around the pre-positioned cone. Proceed 75 feet back to the apparatus and place both saws on the ground. You will then place the saws one at a time back into the compartment. This concludes the event and you will walk 85 feet to the next station. This event is designed to simulate the critical task of placing a ladder at a structure fire and extending the ladder to an upper window or roof. 
you will start at the top rung of a 24 foot aluminum straight ladder, squatting down, grasping the top rung, lifting with your legs, raise the ladder until it is stationary against the wall. This will be done in a hand over hand method using each rung. You will then immediately proceed to a pre-positioned 24 foot aluminum extension ladder. Stand with both feet in the marked three by three box and extend the fly section of the ladder in a hand over hand method until it, it hits the stops. Then lower the fly back into the starting position in a hand over hand method. This concludes this event. Walk 85 feet to the next station. This event is designed to simulate the critical task of using force to breach a wall, open a locked door, or opening a roof for ventilation. You will strike the forcible entry prop using a 10 pound sledgehammer until the buzzer sounds. You'll be allowed to stand on either side of the forcible entry prop. This concludes the event. Walk 85 feet to the next station. This event is designed to simulate the task of searching for, for a fire victim with limited visibility in an unknown area. You will crawl the, from the painted line on the floor on your hands and knees through a tunnel maze that is 36 inches high, 36 inches wide, and 50 feet long with four 90 degree turns. There will be six obstacles throughout the maze you will have to maneuver through. Upon exiting the tunnel maze, continue crawling until the painted line is reached. This concludes the event. Walk 85 feet to the next station. For safety reasons, your progress will be monitored at all times during this event. This event is designed to simulate the removal of fire victim or injured firefighter from emergency incident. You will grasp the 165 pound mannequin by the safety strap located above the head. You will use both hands to grasp the safety strap. You will drag the mannequin in a backward motion 35 feet to a pre-positioned drum. The mannequin is permitted to come in contact with the drum. Turn 180 degrees around the drum and proceed an additional 35 feet to the finish line. You are permitted to stop and reposition, adjust hand grip during the event. The entire mannequin must be dragged completely across the finish line. This concludes the event. You'll be allowed to walk around the drill tower grounds for a brief cool down period and then proceed to the medical area for post agility test vitals and rehydration. You will review your physical agility testing score sheet with the evaluator sign and date. This concludes the Greenville City Fire Department Physical Agility Test for New Hires. During the stair climb, you'll be allowed two times to lay the hose bundle down to adjust handhold if necessary. If at any time during the test you drop the hose bundle, this results in a failure. You must step on every step and will not be allowed to run down the stairs. If you run down the staircase, the evaluator will immediately stop the testing procedure. This results in a failure. You'll receive one warning for missing steps. The second warning results in a failure. If there's any failure, the test time is concluded and you failed the agility test. During the hose drag, if you fail to go around the barrel or go outside the established corridor, this results in a failure. During the hose pull, you will be warned one time if at least one knee is not kept in contact with the ground inside the five by seven box. The second infraction results in a failure. If you move outside the five by seven box, you'll be warned once. The second infraction results in a failure. Any failure and the time is concluded and you fail the agility test. Failures for equipment carry. You'll be allowed to set the saw on the ground to readjust your grip at any time during the event. If you drop either saw during the event, this results in a failure. If you run any time during the test, you will get one warning. The second infraction will result in a failure. If you fail to set both saws on the ground before placing them back into the compartment, this results in a failure. Any failure and the time is concluded and you fail the physical agility test. Failures for the ladder raise. If you miss any rung or throw the ladder during the raise, you will receive one warning. The second infraction will result in a failure. If you allow the ladder to fall to the ground 
or the safety line is used because of a failure to maintain grip control of the ladder, this results in a failure. If you fail to use the hand over hand method or your feet do not remain inside the three by three box, you will receive one warning. The second infraction will result in a failure. If you lose control of the halyard at any time during the extension or lowering of the ladder, this results in a failure. Any failure and the test time will be concluded and you fail the physical agility test. Failures for forcible entry and ventilation. Loss of control of the sledgehammer or releasing it with both hands while swinging it will result in a failure. If you fail to activate the buzzer on the forcible entry prop, this will result in a failure. Any one failure, the time is concluded and you fail the physical agility test. Failures for search. A request for assistance from the evaluator which requires the evaluator to raise a safety escape hatch on the maze will result in a failure and the test time is concluded. You will fail the physical agility test. Failures for rescue. If you grasp, pull, or rest on the drum, you will receive one warning. The second infraction results in a failure. You must maintain both hands on the rope at all times. The first time one hand releases will result in a warning. The second time results in a failure. If the mannequin does not completely cross the finish line, this results in a failure. The test is concluded and you have failed the agility test. Once again, my name is Richard Williams, Battalion Chief of the City of Greenville Fire Department. I want to thank each of you for taking the time to watch the video, fill out the application, and consider coming to Greenville City as your department. Good luck to you on the evaluation. Good luck to you on your test. We look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>